levels of the depth of God in that 45 second interchange. I'm just amazed by God and I'm so thankful he selected me for his moment inside that courthouse. And somehow my life changed too. And after that, I remember smelling such a sweet fragrance inside the courtroom before it even time to express. I believe it was the Holy Spirit that got us from the moment and that everything was perfect in the time perfectly for God's encounter. He missed this young man, must not have been more than 30 years old. And today, remembering him, I cry because of what he accepted about himself, given to him by others, and how no human has ever truly loved him. Somehow, though, I knew when he smiled back at me when I mentioned God's name, that the seed of truth had been planted in his life before that moment, and he knew who Jesus was. I believe someone important to him in his life had planted that seed of truth, and that someone was still praying for him. Yes, we're not supposed to judge a book on its cover. God wants us to see the heart of those around us like he does, so we can minister to them for him. On a singular note, you would be amazed at the different way people treat me as a brunette. <laughs> several years ago, and for several years now, I've been a woman. And I'm so blessed to be a woman, you guys, because I want you to know being a woman means that any time, on any given day, I can change my makeup or hair color or my outfit and become, at least on the outside, a new creature, a new person. And I want you to know that in general, women are treating a lot nicer as brunette versus a woman. <laughs> Yes, man does look at the appearance, but the Lord sees the heart. And with autumn soon to arrive and all the new colors we get to see in this beautiful place we call the land of living waters, I'm committed to singing a new song to the Lord. I want to encourage you as his men of valor to walk in his light, to see the heart of people God sends to you for his care, to be thankful for all things, to give the Lord praise at all times and continue to be reminded we are nothing without Jesus. In closing, the most important relationship of your life is the personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you'd like to receive him as your Savior and Lord and enter into the greatest relationship you have ever known, please pray this prayer with me now. Father, you love the world so much that you gave your only begotten Son to die for our sins so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Your word says we are saved by grace through faith as a gift from you. There is nothing we can do to earn salvation. I believe and confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is your Son, the Savior of the world. I believe he died on the cross for me and for my past, present, and future sins, paying the price for all of them. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, and that he's alive today. I'm a sinner, and I'm sorry for my sins, and I ask you to forgive me. By faith, I receive Jesus Christ now as my Lord and Savior. I believe that I'm saved and will spend eternity with you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you pray that prayer, I'd like for you to tell someone and come join the men here today worshiping the Lord inside the Girl Scout house almost directly across from the Rollerama Junction Skating Ring on North 16th Street. I want you to know you're always welcome here. Father, thank you for using me as an empty vessel to speak your truth into the lives of those listening today. May your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Jerry. It's really been kind of a different day. You know, it's, we, we're blessed that we're here at Ben Bible class and we do a lot of the setup and technical stuff ourselves. And uh, Larry wasn't here this morning, so it was me that was in charge of the technical stuff. And I'm not real technical. <laughs> so I had stuff going everywhere. So I appreciate Jerry stepping in and starting us off this morning and getting us going. And uh, I want 
we're so planning to make sure that we get on the air that God's word would be spoken here today and that people would hear what was said and we're blessed to hear what was said today about the Christian. Mm -hmm. It's all about him and all about being here and having faith in him to do what he does to us and that's taking care of us. We surely do judge people. Rarely we do we look at the hearts of men or women and how God really perceives us. Especially as we're growing up as we're teenagers and we start putting names and initials on people and, and wearing special insignias or, or, or clothes as I did when I was growing up. It was more about what you wore and what you drove and how you looked than what was truly in your heart. And growing up to be an older gentleman, and I try to do my best to receive the word of the Lord and take it to heart. I understand now that it's not about outside appearance. It's about what's truly inside ourselves. And, and, and it's so <coughs> noticeable more living here in Junction. I came from Houston, which was a large area. And uh, you could actually afford to be a snob because there were a lot of us around there that looked at people certain ways and, and the ways they didn't dress and what they didn't have and how we would label them. But being blessed that I live in a, a small town like Junction where people are truly real about what's in their hearts and it's not about the way we dress. And if you look around the, the room today, you'll see different outfits. You'll see different people and how they look. But you see one heart, Amen. one body of Christ here that's in love with the Lord. And that's what's important. Part of where I was today, I was trying to do my deal last night, listen to Billy Graham, but I fell asleep. I'm sorry, Billy. <laughs> I'm sure it was a good word, but I missed it. <laughs> yeah. I missed out. I'll oh, catch you next Saturday. <laughs> But what brought me back, I was listening this morning to a young man preach, and he talked about with our commitment to the Word of God, if we truly believe what's in here. Mm -hmm. Do we? <clears throat> because the Great Commission, and I've said this before, is that we grow out and, and, and baptize and, and teach and make disciples of all men. Mm -hmm. But do we do that? And then the only way that we would truly do that is if we really believe that this is the Word of God. And this is truly what's in. And it's very important not only that we teach and, and, and make disciples of all men, women, and children, but it's very important that we bring this word to our children. That's more important than anything. Yeah, you know, I talk about our neighbors. I talk about people who live next door. Have we knocked on the doors? Have we told them about Jesus Christ? Maybe, maybe not. What are we doing with our kids? We just let them run wild. Let them go crazy. We'll drop them off at school. The teachers take care of them. Thank goodness we have Christian godly teachers. So how about on Wednesday nights we just drop them off at church and let the, the church people take care of them. Thank goodness for Wednesday night churches. Isn't that really cool? Yeah. But what are we doing about it? I was reading some stuff in our Sunday school class the other day. talked about we were in Genesis and we were talking about Adam and Eve and we are talking about being accountable mm -hmm. in different areas. And uh, my sister talked about it today like judging people but also but you know, we can't necessarily help sometimes where we're from, and we can't really afford to judge people. But in the book of Romans, it talks about, in, in Romans 1.20, it says, For the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so there will be without excuse. We really don't have excuse. That we recognize that there is a greater power than what's here on the earth. And what's, world, what's wrong is, what we're doing today is in the book of Isaiah, Whoa! We turn away from God. And they, we feel like we can do all these things on our own. We're totally broken from Him. Yeah, I got enough strength. I got enough delta up in the college. I can do these things. But not really. Our big question in Sunday school the other day when we were talking about Adam and Eve, we talked about when Adam was banished and Eve was banished from the Garden of Eden. Who took care of sin? I mean, there was no law yet, was there? No, there wasn't law until Moses. And we also know that the law is just something we try to live by because we can't live by it truly and holy. Our grace is come from Jesus Christ and the sacrifice and atonement he made for our sins. But what happened between there? What happened between Adam and Eve and Moses and the law? I just said something in Romans. There shouldn't have been a doubt that there should have been a greater power. 
And also God came back after the flood and said, I'm going to make everybody accountable. Mm -hmm. And I believe he said that when he was talking with Noah and his family. He said, if you take human life, you're going to be accountable for it. Mm -hmm. So there were, were, were rules that were set out by God and have always been set out by God. And we have totally ignored it. I pray for people as the young men that Patricia talked about today that had been beat up so badly spiritually and mentally by no telling whom to the point where he'd come believing that he wasn't worth anything because we all have value. And we need to pray for people like that. We have a very positive men jail minister here that go into the jails here and they talk to the men and the women and the people that are there every day and try to get them to learn about Jesus Christ. We are blessed to live in Junction, Texas. Nobody has any money. Nobody has really any insignias on their shirts that really mean anything. We all run together. We all bleed together. We all hurt together. We are one body of Christ. I am so blessed and so thankful that I now live here in this larger area that I'm really raised from. Believe it or not, not a lot of people know where I've come from and how I was raised, but I find it so intriguing to listen to the people like Jerry who was raised in Junction and can remember being raised in the word of the Lord and all the fun stories he talks about, whether it's bad or good or whatever. And I listen to people that were raised in this great small titty city that have this unbelievable bond and their bond is Jesus Christ. I didn't have that. I had a lot more stuff. I had a lot more toys. I'd be looking good on the outside. But I didn't have that heart that you people have here on the inside from Jesus Christ, raised in Jefferson, Texas. And I appreciate you allowing me to be part of that body now. It's a change. There's still a lot of Joe in there. But I appreciate y'all letting me be there. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this unbelievably gorgeous day here in Junction, Texas. You have truly blessed each and every one of us. I pray that if whoever was listening to this broadcast this morning, whether they're sitting at home getting ready for church or sitting at home just eating breakfast or driving up and down I-10 and just wanted to hear a good radio station, that they tuned in and heard your word. I pray that hearts were changed and minds were transformed. And people said, man, i got to look into God's word. He's the real deal. He's the real deal. He's the one that can really make a difference in my life, my wife's lives, and my children's lives. Most importantly, dear Lord, thank you for your son, because there's absolutely nothing we could have done for ourselves that could have worked our way to heaven. It was for his great sacrifice that we have the opportunity to spend eternity with you. And in your son's name, I pray these words. Amen. That's the end of the lesson today.